Well, welcome back. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, today we're going to pick up uh, where we left off. We want to discuss some relationships between the correlation coefficient and the autocorrelation. Uh, here we've um, shown the correlation coefficient, uh, um, kind of a more statistical representation is the covariance uh, between s and w over the square root of the variances of s and w, the product of the variances. <coughs> S, you remember, is the um, is is we we're using it as the seismic signal. So these could be the trace amplitudes. W could be the wavelet uh, embedded in the in the uh, data. It could be a waveform, a reference waveform associated with the reservoir interval that you're looking for. Um, and over here to the right, we've uh, just taken this and we've represented it as a sum of the products of uh, signal uh, uh, amplitudes relative to their mean uh, times the waveform amplitudes relative to um, relative to their mean divided by the square root of the sum of the squares of the signal amplitudes relative to uh, the mean and the square root or the square of the um, waveform amplitudes relative to to their mean the autocorrelation compares a function to a copy of itself that's uh, delayed or advanced. And uh, we expect that, uh, you know, when we compare the um, function with itself, that it's going to have a perfect correlation. However, if we shift the function relative to uh, <clears throat> its uh, initial uh, copy of itself, uh, relative to its initial um, uh, location that this correlation is going to uh, be less than one. So um, <clears throat> we're going to go through this uh, computation here. The autocorrelation as we've defined it in a discrete sense is just the uh, sum of the products of the function with a delayed or advanced uh, copy of itself. And um, tau in this case, uh, the output uh, autocorrelation value uh, runs from tau uh, greater than or equal minus n minus 1 uh, to less than or equal to plus n minus 1. And we're going to show that we can in fact get the uh, correlation coefficient to equal the zero lag autocorrelation uh, equal to 1. That's kind of our goal here. Now, I just wanted to point out that um, the relationship that we presented uh, discussed previously, we, we didn't include these factors here because obviously they cancel out. Um, we have kind of a bias if we use 1 over n, um, you know, if you go back to some of your statistics here. So we already know what the uh, average is and so <clears throat> This uh, is not uniquely a function of n independent uh, variables or n independent values. So we use n minus 1 here. But I guess the point that we want to make is that, uh, you know, we've corrected for sampling bias, but in this expression for the correlation coefficient, it, it kind of doesn't matter because these two factors cancel out. And, you know, formally the covariance would be 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of the products and the variance uh, 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of the squares. So, <clears throat> so this is the uh, form that we're working with and um, uh, again note that these values are relative to their mean and we asked uh, previously to think about uh, well okay what how would this uh, function change if the means if these were zero mean uh, um, functions. So here we have the um, autocorrelation function. We're just going to take a look at a simple wavelet or waveform here. It consists of uh, three values. We have a one and a half or minus one. I'm just showing them in stick form here. This is a minus one half amplitude. We could just write this as a series of numbers, simple wavelet. And of course the sample numbers here uh, we're using zero to represent the location of the first sample. So uh, we have samples zero, one, two, three, and four, and, uh, and backward in time, minus one and uh, two. 
and just remember that outside the range all these um, that we haven't written them down but all the values would be equal to zero and we have talked about convolution and deconvolution previously in the uh, convolution deconvolution playlist so this is something that you could go back to and look at the videos in that uh, playlist if you if you need a, a bit of a review on some of this but uh, we'll go through this pretty pretty quickly uh, again the uh, autocorrelation process that's displayed in this equation over here basically you know, we have this three sample wavelet here we're kind of running it from uh, minus uh, n minus 1 to plus n minus 1 we go through this uh, shifting process multiply some shift again now here we're looking at a shift of 2 the shifted this is a copy of w this is the unshifted uh, function w and um, <clears throat> so the first output is at tau equal minus 2 turns out to be minus 3 quarters why is that well there's only one non-zero multiplication and that's between w2 in the unshifted uh, function with w0 in the uh, shifted function so you can see for example that w0 times w minus 2 um, w1 times w minus 1 these are 0 and then we have uh, we would have a w3 over here which is a 0 times w1 that's going to be 0 so this is the only non-zero function we're running time forward uh, from 0 and tau forward from minus 2 and then we're just carrying out this multiplication so that's uh, something that you know we're just going to repeat over over and over again <clears throat> So here we do it for the next sample, and uh, so again we've uh, this is the shifted copy, this is the unshifted copy. Uh, we get a result of minus one here. These are the non-zero products here. We have <clears throat> we have uh, uh, w one, you know, w zero times w minus one is going to be zero. So that's uh, zero here, but we have w one in the unshifted. Uh, function times w0 and the shifted uh, copy and that's non-zero minus one times uh, one and a half gives us a minus one and a half and then we have uh, uh, w2 which is minus one half times minus one and that gives us a plus one half so we end up getting an output of minus one in this case now here we have everything lined up so we should just have the sum of the squares the sum of the squares here are you know one and a half times one and a half is two and a quarter minus one times minus one is one minus one half times minus one half is a minus one quarter we add all those together we get three and a half okay so here we've just uh, you know we've 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 kind of gone through these just showing the stick diagrams and we get these outputs minus 0.75 just working with this relationship up here minus 1 at lag minus 1 3.5 at lag 0 what we're showing here and then if we just carry it on uh, to lags plus 1 and plus 2 we get minus 1 and minus 0 0.75 and you notice that they're symmetrical and that's kind of what we'd expect for a function being compared to itself it doesn't you know it doesn't matter whether we've uh, shifted you know one function in the positive direction or shifted it, its copy in the negative direction we end up getting the same result so these are the lags that we see over here we just plotted up the autocorrelation function um, to illustrate its symmetry minus three quarters minus one 3.5 minus one minus three quarters So here we want to talk about, okay, well, the autocorrelation and the correlation coefficient, uh, we, you know, there's no reason why we, we could make the, the autocorrelation term that at zero lag turns out to be 3.5 instead of 1. Um, but uh, there are a couple things that we ask you to think about. First was that the uh, average uh, of S and W are equal to 1. So 1 and a half minus 1 minus 1 and a, one and a half divided by 3. Uh, well, 0 divided by 3 is 0. So we uh, just make an alteration of, um, you know, just looking back at these values here, we've, uh, we, can, we can see that we divide by 3.5, we should get 1. Um, and, 
so altering, if we come back to the correlation coefficient, we want to draw a relationship between the correlation coefficient and the autocorrelation. Um, we can see over here for the zero mean processes, and I'm just working here with the wave up because that's the function that we were working with. Uh, we end up with the sum of the products up here, and then down in the uh, uh, denominator we have the sum of the squares, uh, wt uh, and wt plus tau. <coughs> so if we you know carry carry this out. Um, we're looking at the variances actually down here, and, and um, so you know, in this case, we're treating w as a, a separate function, and to get the variance of this function, we need to sum over all of its values. So we just can't uh, we can't take a we can't have the variance. Uh, you know, the variance is the, of the function is should be a constant. That's so that's what we're representing here. We're just combining these two terms. And we have the uh, square of the uh, <clears throat> variance here. Take the square root of that. We have the uh, sum of the squares of uh, wt. Up here, we just have the sum of the products of wt times the uh, lagged values of uh, a copy of itself. We're representing that uh, over here, just transforming the uh, uh, denominator as, as shown. So this is basically the lagged sum of products over the sum of the squares. So we kind of have the answer to the question we were looking at. There are two questions we were looking at. If we have a zero mean, uh, then these terms, you know, the, the average value of W uh, cancels out. So that takes care of that question. We see how that transformed this relationship over here. And then over here, we're just um, uh, trying to see, you know, if we can get the uh, autocorrelation equal to the um, to the correlation coefficient. We can see that we can do that. Uh, for the zero lag, it's kind of obvious. We just divide uh, the zero lag autocorrelation by 3.5. But what about the rest of the values? And if we divide all the values in the autocorrelation by uh, 3.5, we get three, minus 3 quarters divided by 3.5 minus 0. 2, 1, um, minus 1 divided by 3.5, minus 0 0.286. And going in the positive direction, we have uh, minus 0 0.286 and minus 0 0.21. And I've just shown over here just uh, some uh, screen captures from an Excel file where it shows the, uh, you can use the correlation function here in order to calculate the correlation coefficient is zero, lag is one, and if you just lag these values here and calculate it for lag one and two, you get uh, uh, the values that we've gotten, that we already computed. So we, we do see that the um, autocorrelation and the correlation coefficient are identical to each other if we divide the autocorrelation by uh, the sum of the products. So these two, we can think of them as being identical if we uh, in this case, just divide by the sum of the squares. Take the autocorrelation, divide the values by the sum of the squares, and we get the uh, correlation coefficient. And that's, this is the result that we were after for the zero mean uh, uh, process. So for the next time, um, you know, we've, we've talked about the seismic signal being zero mean, the wavelet being zero mean, and uh, the, you know we we've got this W representing a reservoir signature, let's say, and it, it we assume that it also has a zero mean. And think about your seismic trace. You know those the seismic traces that you're looking at, they just kind of wiggle back and forth between zero. So over a, you know a, a, doesn't have to be too large of a window. The uh, amp, the average amplitudes are going to be pretty close to zero each time you uh, sum them up. So you're going to have a zero pretty close to a zero mean as you go up and down the trace. And so we, we pretty much made that assumption with the autocorrelation. Now consider that for the cross-correlation, uh, we're dealing with these zero mean sequences. And what is the form of R when S and uh, W are equal to zero? It would be something to think about for next time. And also 
Consider, what, what do you think? Is there a relationship between the correlation coefficient and the slope? So maybe you haven't thought of that before. It, is, there, is there any relationship between the two? And so think about these, uh, kind of come back, take a look at this expression, uh, play around with it with zero means, and also think uh, uh, you know, whether there's a relationship between R and uh, B that we uh, talked about before. So that pretty much wraps up uh, wraps it up for today. Thanks for uh, uh, joining me, and uh, we'll we'll uh, see you next time.